All right. Uh, we're going to we're going to glue the um, the moss stuff on now, and to do that, we're gonna get some of this. Oh, you know what? I need but the reference for the for the robot for the robot. I've got some reference pictures like this. Pardon the glare, everyone, but. It looks like this. So we're gonna do do that kind of layout on the robot. We'll start from the back, which is not it's not really shown in many pictures. Actually here's a shot of the back. Right? So we're gonna do something like that. And that's again it's gonna be kind of like a combination of, of various layers of products to kind of get that look. But I'll keep this picture handy <clears throat> so I can refer to it. What's neat is that there's some um, there's some gra uh, flowers sprouting up from the from the robot as well, which is really cool. <laughs> okay, so let's start right here. Let's start from the hip. And we'll get some of this. And I want to be careful about. Honestly, I feel like dry brushing on the glue probably gets a nicer result than rather like a very solid application of the glue. And then we got a lot of buildup on the shoulders and on the back. Maybe something like this. Now we'll just kind of stick to these areas right now. We don't want to get any glue in the joints, which has actually happened right <laughs> as I speak. I got some glue in the joints. So we'll just kind of take a moist brush and kind of wick away at that and then let's get the sponge let's get this stuff chook how's it going chook forcing myself to take a break from work and to enjoy some french toast french toast beautiful i love it how's it going chook well i you've already told me how it's going but yeah that's good 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 i'm glad to hear that you're taking a little break you work so hard. You're so important to that company, Chuke. It's wild to me how you should be getting a raise. <laughs> you should become the boss. You should just be their boss now. Self-care. We are pro-self-care over here. Yeah, I'm doing okay. I saw Across the Spider-Verse and I loved it. I thought it was amazing. Amazing. Who else who has seen it? Anyone else has seen that movie? <laughs> it's like 3 weeks old now at this point. But uh yeah. You should catch it if you uh if you like the first one. Yeah, good things. It's good. I liked it a lot, a lot, a lot. It does a lot of things from the first movie just a lot better. And you get you get more into the other characters too, like Gwen. You kind of get to learn more about Gwen, which is cool, because I thought Gwen was awesome. Reference. Let me look at my reference. And I also saw Avatar The Way of Water, <laughs> which I also liked. I also liked quite a bit. It was long. That movie is a long ass movie. It was good. It was good. I probably liked it more than a lot of the Star Wars stuff that has come out. Um, and that movie looks expensive as hell. That movie looks like every shot looks like it costed like like four million dollars or something. It's it's wild how how fancy that movie is. Like how all the shots look so so 
detailed. No, like nothing looks cheap. You know, sometimes you watch a movie like even Lord of the Rings. As much as I love Lord of the Rings, it's like there's a handful of scenes in that first movie where you're like, oh, this looks cheap. This looks like they kind of were like, uh, let's kind of let's kind of ease up on the budget for this shot. <laughs> but um, no, that is not the case for Avatar. And it's Paper Joey. What's up, Paper Joey? How are you today? What up, what up, what up, what up? Ba, ba, ba. We are basically done with the diorama. I say that, but there's probably more stuff I'll add. So now we are now bringing the fight. We're bringing the fight to the, <laughs> to the robot itself. And yeah, it's kind of tough. I want to talk more about Spider-Verse, but it's such a new movie that I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but there were definitely some surprises. There were some surprises. And, and actually, I can say that, you know, the first movie has a lot of gags and, and sort of like memes, like Spider-Man, like jokey stuff from Spider-Man lore, Spider-Man history. And that is perfectly fine. I am here for it. And the second movie has a lot of great little gags, too, that refer back to the, the world and the history of Spider-Man, including TV shows and movies and the comics. It, it refers to many, many of these things. Um, but when it comes to the big moments, the big emotional moments, uh, those are still rooted in the, in like, how to say, the... The fiction of the of the movie itself, and not dependent on anything from the past. If if that's kind of like a, a good way to phrase it, if that makes any sense, it's kind of like um, the big moments and the emotional moments. They all sort of hit because it's something to do with the with everything that had come before it in terms of uh, the last Spider-Man uh, Spider-Verse movie. That's kind of what I want to get at. So, and I think that was a smart move, right? Because the opposite is something like, um, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Star Trek Into Darkness. That was like the J.J. Abrams, his second movie. And in that movie, there's this big moment where Benedict Cumberbatch is playing a uh, con, right? But he goes under an alias the whole time. He has this other name that he calls himself right not to uh, so as to not arouse the suspicions of others or something so so finally he reveals his name to to kirk and spock he's like my name is khan and it's like the music swells and it's like this supposed to be this big moment right but within the fiction of its of the film itself no one knows who khan is like the actual characters all the people no one actually knows who khan is so why is why is this being treated like a big deal that's the that's the that's the difference i guess it's like the big moments in that movie are sort of dependent on on your knowledge of star trek history on your knowledge of things that aren't relevant to the present movie if that makes any sense carmi Okay, the little arm came loose. And, wah! <laughs> oh shit, okay. Maybe we'll just leave it like, like that. Just want to make sure this joint moves, because I did get some glue into the joint. Just put that there, put that off to the side. Ba, ba, ba. So yeah, this is what's happening right now. And we're also going to add paint to the moss itself. So it's not just like this singular uniform color. In a sense, really what we want out of this is the texture of the of the spongy material. And we're using the, the green color of it as a base, but we're not going to simply rely on it uh, exclusively to create like the mossy look. I think for launch, just a hunch, just a guess. Okay, 
Let's try that. It's like we're seasoning. We're seasoning our robot here with some with some spices. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. And once again, guys, uh, we will be kind of um, applying some glue as well as some paint on top of the moss here to kind of create more variation in the tones that we're seeing here so it's not just like this even even spongy color uh, okay so let's get the let's get the salt bay the row <laughs> exactly right <laughs> I mentioned that with the uh, with the diorama as well it's a little salt bay a little salt bay a movie that you know is like a recut of of the TV show and there's some new scenes added in as like you know they, they do that thing all the time with manga right or anime I should say they do that all the time with anime and my understanding is that it kind of helps a bit making it a bit more easy to follow or easy to relate to or something this right here so yeah hopefully this will kind of help seal it in there we go and we let this dry now and we'll revisit this there's a few movies oh really there's a few movies I didn't know that I, I thought that there was like the one but I don't know okay that's looking pretty cool let's actually hmm curious and there's also the matter of the little girl that we need to add as well let's take off this tape looks good thanks Viper appreciate it we're getting there we're, we're so close now which is very nice very nice to be finally close no you're you're fully aware of that that feeling as well. Uh, I'm sure all of you are when uh, you've been working on a project for a while, and you're just you're just right there, right there. And it's like you could stop, but there's just so there's there's things you got to do. There's more that you know will make it look just a little bit better, and just a little bit better each and every time. So you just keep on going. Here we are with this. Let's pull it out once more. Ooh. Pull out the pull out king right here. Whoop. Put this box. So yeah, there it is. Yeah, and I'm liking what we have going on here. Very nice. Where's my, oh, okay, good. And let's put the head on the robot. Old type, what's up old type? Wow. Oh crap. Gotta adjust. The little. There we are. Dat Moss. Dat Moss, though. So th there we go. Got the robot the robot has some moss on him too there's there's more moss to come <laughs> we're getting there if i point if i point away some of the lights it won't look as blown out here let me try and let me try and let's turn off this light cuz right now the light is it's just totally getting blown out right now so this is basically just the the one light pointing down on it as well as like the the light from the window to give you a better look at a better feel for the colors 
So we're getting there. The little girl needs to be finished up too. Storm, I still want an HGG self perfect pack kit, but I can't find one at a reasonable price. Yeah, I would settle for any kind of G self. Um, yeah, I kind of got back into the hobby and they were already like long gone. Long gone. But thank you so much, old type. How are you today? Let's get these lights back in place. <clears throat> So the moss and everything, that's that was like the main attraction for me to work on this kit. <laughs> it was like the big brain idea that I had. But it was something that I couldn't really couldn't really start to do until now. Like pretty much, yeah, yeah, nice. Okay. We doing this? We doing this. If it looks well, anyways, we'll see. You can always just adjust adjust ooh too much photo editing is something i'm still learning like photo like lighting on the photos and what parts to focus on post shots yeah i mean we did a bit of that back in school but it was like not too in depth um my roommate one of my roommates was a uh, was in the in photography so i also kind of learned a bit from him too okay what do we got here but yeah i think we've probably talked about this before jose but it's one of the fascinating aspects of this hobby and it's something that i really didn't anticipate was was kind of branching out and learning about a bunch of different things aside from the act of building and painting a model you kind of end up learning about photography you kind of end up learning about streaming and streaming technology you kind of end up learning about uh all sorts of stuff and i i like that it's kind of neat all right oh oh shit Guess what time it is? Balloon time. Let's go. Balloon time. I wonder how messy is my room right now. It's probably mad messy. That's that sound you hear, guys, is the sound of electricity, static electricity. We're doing science, guys. All right. Stand up for me. Yeah, I can hear the, I can hear the, the moss. Uh, sorry, the grass. Get attracted to the to the static electricity on the balloon. It's pretty, pretty funky. Viper, uh, photography and photo editing, no one prepares you for that, yeah. No one prepares you for that. And it's it's something that, like, so for example, I know, Viper, you've been getting ready for, for your model and everything. You've submitted it, you took your photos. It's something that you have to account for in, in your build time when you're competing, right? Like, even when I was doing the model for Joe's... Uh, build fighters competition you know i kind of had to say oh like i'm gonna take accounting for how much time it's gonna take to build and paint this thing i also have to account like two days at least to take photos you know give myself that much time to take a decent photo and and whatever kind of like little tweaks and adjustments that i need vanilla very rudimentary yes exactly this is what we do here on the stream we're very you know did i want to buy the pricey equipment to create a static electricity charge and blah 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 i was like no we're just gonna we're just gonna use a balloon
Just gnarly looking sick. Thank you so much, Just Gnarly. We're getting there. We are getting there. That worked out pretty nicely, that pass. Even better than, than what I had done on my diorama. Uh, that worked out pretty well. And that was like making the grass, applying the grass while the balloon was close by. That was the strat. You can kind of blow it too. Yeah, that's looking nice. A, little, a lot of variation there now. Don't mind that there's like little patches of white and stuff. Futaba, what up Futaba? Nice to see you here. Via uh, Viper. All that time is accounted for. I was submitting 50 minutes before the deadline. Procrastination is such a rush. <laughs> yeah, we gotta blow it. We definitely gotta blow on it. Just uh, just regular Epo Dempsey roll things. That's what we do here. <laughs> Yeah, let's get some of that on here at an odd spot. I think it's always going to be an odd spot, to be honest. By the way, some of you guys, some of you guys that have made clips, did you end up deleting your clips on my channel? Because I, I was like, look, or did I accidentally delete them? Because I was checking some out. I checked out my clips. I was like, wait, where's all those, where's all those clips? Are they gone? Did, were they deleted? Did I delete them? Or did you guys delete them? Just gnarly, you did it! <laughs> it was me, Barry, yeah. What's his name? Zoom? Are you my Zoom? Alright, let's get some here. I may have accidentally de deleted them myself, but I was like, wait, what happened here? Anyways. Whoa. I think it'd be really neat to do a Shadow of the Colossus row, but that would be cool too. Huh? Uh, I lost the clips from your channel. They're gone. I know that you made some and I was checking and they're gone. I was like, wait, did I do this? What happened here? Did the, did the Twitch cops get involved? Yeah. And Carmi too, cause it's basically Carmi, Eddie and Vanilla that have been mating, making clips. What have I done? I don't think I did anything, TBH. <gasps> the Yoda impression, did I save them? Maybe I save them. <laughs> Yoda impression. Fucking. Stood by and did nothing. I'm gonna have to check again. Yeah, honestly, I refreshed. I refreshed it a bunch of times. I'm like, am I tripping? What the fuck happened? Please stand up, sir. Quentin Tarantino? No! <laughs> you know, mm. well, give me a little mm. for old times' sake. type that one clip where you were working on something that fell and you were like hey we should talk about fuck <laughs> uh. did you guys see by the way like twitch put out this this statement or like they put out this email about how you you need to accurately 
uh, describe your channel and flag it as mature or not and they have this whole breakdown of what that even means so like excessive swearing it's gotta be mature Ex like you know obviously you know pointing your butt at the camera that's 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 gonna be a mature blah 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 all this stuff and I guess some of it is pretty obvious but at the same time it just it's kind of struck me as like man this is this is like kind of a drag <laughs> it's not like it's not like it's something that I personally have to worry about I don't I don't think so at least but it's just just another thing that you might have to want to keep in mind when you stream I guess post it in your discord you put when you want to check it out <laughs> Can I like the mic now? Oh, really? Wait, or do you you can, but it's considered mature, so you have to f you have to flag your thing as mature. You can't lick the mic now. What the heck is Amaranth gonna do? Ba -ba. Robot, shake the robot. get some grass on here <laughs> I'm like holding them upside down it's like a baby that's given birth Ron Runish X oh no what did you do to the poor model I don't think I've done anything bad to the poor model I'm just uh, putting a bunch of grass and moss on it, you know, just regular things, just regular things. All right. You've been mossed. You've been hit by a moss criminal, a mossy criminal. Let's see. Yeah, we should probably get some on the back. What's up, Runnish X, by the way? How's it going? I don't think I've seen you here too often. Let's see. Nice to see you once again. Yeah, we're just uh, we're just adding moss, just moss things. It's all right. Hmm. Uh. Okay. Yeah, that might be good. That might be good. Got to <laughs> This is so funny with the balloon. I'd be very interested in seeing the effect of uh, of the actual static grass app applicator. There we go. And let's stand for me, please. <laughs> this thing is so like precariously balanced. A little hard to reach reach some of these spots here you go arch consume beverage I got gotcha. you I think I ran out of coffee so let's just have some water and let's get another static charge and see if we can't get this stuff to stand 
a little bit more. Let's get another static charge. Yeah, this is easily one of the oddest things I've ever done on stream. <laughs> one time, one time I uh, painted the blast effects rocks. You know that band I make, the effects parts? There's like this, these rock plastic model parts, and I've spent like an entire stream painting them to look like rocks. And it just suddenly dawned on me, I was like, this is probably the weirdest thing I've ever done on stream, is paint rocks. <laughs> there you go, I think that's, I think that they're pretty, pretty stuck on there. I've, uh, I've, I've, uh, eaten Uncrustables on stream. That's another thing that I've definitely done. <laughs> All right. All right. There we go. Probably that is enough. <laughs> That's cool. I like it. And let's get, let's get a third one on somewhere. Yeah, and the reason why I'm using super glue, it's just just a little easier to manage to like instantly get that on there. We'll probably add a few more cuz it'll I think it'll look good. tweezer itself. I think the shape of these counts for a lot, like if you kind of make sure that the shape of the leaves look good. But yeah, here's here I'll show you guys real close. There's like the leaf kind of sprouting out. I think at this point there really isn't much more to do in terms of what I can do presently right now. We kind of have to let everything dry <clears throat> before we really get to work like the final final steps on this. But yeah, let's actually take a look at how everything is shaping up. Maybe at this point, um, or not right now, but the next time I work on this, we'll kind of finish up. Uh, We'll finish up the uh, the girl, the little girl that comes with this kit. Arch update, it has returned to the same distribution center in LA for the fourth day. Why? Oh my god, this is terrible. There's, prob there's probably so many people in the same situation as you too. Like, I have no idea why. That is, that is shitty, dude. I feel for you. Okay, let's take stock of what we've done thus far. So here it is. There's the diorama. I'm probably going to end up buying some some more paint that's like slightly darker than this to kind of get a bit of a variation on it. Something like that. And there's the robot. And the pose and everything isn't set in stone at the moment. Let's uh let's try and move the lights and turn the lights off a bit so we can get a bit better idea of the colors. There we go. And yeah, don't mind the pose, still kind of has to get settled in. Something like that and then wah, little girl. Right there. We're getting there, guys. 